Hi everyone, my name is Lee Sankey. I hope you are doing okay with the situation with uh, the coronavirus, which is obviously a massive concern at the moment. Today in this video, I'm going to be talking about timing skills and one of my favorite moves, which I call push and hold. So I'm going to share that with you and uh, so you're able to work on it and integrate it into your playing. Now, when I'm talking about timing skills, I, I'm not just talking about keeping time. I'm talking about your sense of time and how you're able to change your phrasing. Uh, and when we, when we think about the players that we really look up to and admire and trying to emulate, people like Kim Wilson, Little Walter, Big Walter Halton, contemporary players like Brendan Power and Jason Ritchie, it's not that they just have a great sound and a great feel, they have a great sense of timing, right? A great, uh, a, a great phrasing. And this is the essence of, 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 of why they sound so cool. And it's the biggest single area overlooked by intermediate players, especially. So I just want to give you an example of how you can take a phrase which is very predictable and linear and just with very small, what I call micro variations in time, you can transform it into something a lot more interesting. So we're going to be using a C harp in the key of G in cross position. So let me just run through uh, and give an example of what I'm talking about and then we'll break it down. So I'm going to t play a very uh, well-known common riff that, 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 the, that I'm, I'm sure as an intermediate player, you already know it definitely as, a, as, as a, an advanced player. Uh, and then I'm going to take that phrase, as I said, I'm going to apply what I call this push and hold and you'll see how it changes. So I'm going to loop through it and play it in a very uh, predictable manner and then see how it, how it changes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and explain how it works. Okay, so I hope you can hear that difference and how it's kind of switched up. So initially, um, the, the riff is each note is played for an equal amount of time, equal interval, and they're all on the beat. They're all very square to the beat. And then when I switch it up and I apply the push and hold, I'm just playing two notes slightly differently. One of them I'm playing slightly earlier and holding for longer, a fraction longer, and the second note I'm holding for slightly longer, and that's it. So let me just demonstrate that again. So boring. Okay, so it suddenly becomes um, a lot more interesting, it's got form, it's got a bit of swagger, it's got a bit of shape, it's, and it's, it's less predictable. So what's happening there? So let me just break down um, the form and the, and the structure first. So it's a two bar phrase, so that is to say we're in 4-4, four, four. each bar has four beats, and we're playing one note per beat. So it's two bars, there's eight beats, there's eight notes. For the bar one, as we go up, the notes are draw two, draw three, half step, bend, draw four, below five, okay? One, two, three, four. Okay? Then we go draw five, below five, draw four, draw three, half step, bend. Another four notes. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we put those two together, bar one and bar two, we've got something we can loop round. One, two, three, four. Okay, so how do we switch it up from something which is, which is, as I said, frankly, uh, boring, is we apply this push and, uh, and hold. So what happens is, this is all about the transition between the last note at the end of bar two and the first note of the next bar which starts the cycle again. 
So the first of those notes is the draw three half step bend, which is the last note on bar two, okay? Okay, now what we do here with the push and hold is that where instead of playing it on the downbeat as your foot hits the floor on the beat, okay, we're playing it slightly earlier. Now to really get into this, uh, this exercise, it's, it's really important that you embody time. And the simplest way to do that is to tap your foot, okay? It's gonna make a huge difference, okay? You can do this exercise playing to a metronome, but it's important to do it without a metronome. And whether you're doing it with or without a metronome, it's really important to tap your foot or to sway, um, to give yourself, um, you know, to put time in your, in your body, to give it a kind of physicality, if you will. So if we're tapping our foot, <clears throat> We've got the downbeat, okay? And that's everything that's very linear on the beat. Okay? Now when we push a note, this draw three half step bend, what we're doing is we're hitting it slightly earlier. So if we think of your foot like being on an accelerator pedal, and that pedal has travel, okay? Now you can play that note anywhere along that line before the downbeat and if you do you're hitting it earlier that is to say you're pushing it okay and there's no right or wrong, right or wrong answer how much you push it um, and, and when we see bands that are very tight and really locked in and they're playing with time that that's where they're sort of locked into things like pushes and everyone has the kind of same feel that's why it's so magical so here what we're doing is as your foot starts to to, to, to go down you play the note earlier it's almost like it's being squeezed out so it's already sounding before your foot hits the floor so this is a fraction earlier fraction of a beat earlier then what we do is we then your foot is uh, hits the floor and the note is sounding then you continue to hold the note as your foot comes up and as your foot goes down so you're holding it for a beat it's it's, it's longer than the other notes okay and then as your foot hits the floor, that is the first beat of the next cycle, which is the draw two. And again, you hit that uh, note for a fraction longer. You can hold it, you play it for a beat. So your foot hits the floor, it comes up, you keep holding the note, and as you come down, you go back onto the draw three half step bend on your way back up. So we've got Okay, so you've seen it, so it's a, it's, a, it's a feel thing, okay? But you can learn how to do it. Now, if you take these ideas and apply it to your licks and riffs and grooves, you can play around with it, push and hold, um, you'll find it just gives you um, a, new, a, a new angle, a new feel. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm referring to timing skills, things which can improve your phrasing and things which can like break you out of a rut. Now, if you're interested in finding more about this kind of thing, I've got a course on my Vimeo channel called Timing Skills for Blues Harmonica. So check that out in the link below. You can watch the trailer and find out um, more. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again to everyone who's subscribed to my channel. If you can do so, clicking uh, the link below. And thanks for uh, watching this video and I um, hope you are well in the circumstances. I'm gonna follow up with uh, another video with another exercise on timing skills now I've introduced this idea. Thank you very much.